Hello, guys. Watch this. Oh. Oh. Ah. Time for glow. Hello again. It's our new year, new you, new me, and new videos. Today, we will learn how to make a very simple glow hack for Counter Strike 2. This glow will show opponents through walls with a red color and it's incredibly cool. We will go through the code step by step from nothing to the final program but if you want to become a supporter of this channel and also get access to instant source code then I suggest you check out the coffee page or even perhaps subscribe, like or write a comment. I would love to hear the next feature you want me to cover. You can also find the Discord server in the description. But remember, comply with the terms of service for the game you're coding hacks on. Many games permit it and it's essential to respect their guidelines. All Sweat C Sharp tutorials are designed with multiplayer disabled and this tutorial will precisely demonstrate how to achieve that. Now enjoy this tutorial. So, welcome to today's showcase. Let's open the final project that you will have and uh, take a closer look. So, it's incredibly similar to the tutorials before, but this time we will use the FL detected by enemy sensor time. We will set it to a value that makes them visible. So, let's try it in game. So, before we run any application that manipulates the game's memory, we will go into Steam under the game Counter Strike 2. We will right click on the properties. We will add the launch option dash insecure. This is because without this, you can risk getting banned. Dash insecure will disable VAC and we can play on our own without harming anyone else's experience. So we can't join the normal matchmaking, but we can sit in a practice game all to ourselves and test our applications. So incredibly important, you can get banned otherwise. Inside the main menu, you can check that this is enabled by going into matchmaking checking a map and this window will come up saying that you have launched the game in Dash Insecure. Otherwise, do not run any applications that could get you banned. Here you can now instead go into practice and play with bots like this. So when we're inside of a practice game on the office map with some bots, we can run our application make sure that the offsets are updated and here we should see a list of the entities that are loaded should be the teammates and enemies but we will see the enemies with our glow pretty cool so like this you can see him All in red. We can't see the teammates in glow, but that's not a, as important. It's not as fluent as the glow in the previous game, Counter Strike Go, but it's a glow nonetheless. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you in a bit. Let's begin creating our glow hack. So the first step will be to create a new project. It will be in C Sharp and it's a console app with the .NET Framework 8. Then once the project is created, we will go into the properties of the project and set the build type to the 64-bit architecture. Then we will go into the NuGet package manager and install the beautiful library Sweat64. 
Now that we have installed the Sweat64 library, we will initialize it by creating a new instance of the Sweat class with CS2 as the process and then get the client module, the client.dll, with the sweat.get module base and then client.dll. Then we will get some offsets. So the offsets come from the A2X CS2 dumper page on GitHub. Credit goes to him for creating this offset dumper where we can get our offsets updated and ready to use. So the first one will be the DV entity list, which we'll get from the offsets.cs file. Then once we have the entity list, we will get two more offsets, but these are from the client.dll.cs file. And the first one is the H player pawn, which is the handle of the pawn. Then the FL detected by enemy sensor time offset. Then once we have the offsets, we can finally create our glow hack loop. So create a while true to have it always run. And then we get the entity list at first or the address of the entity list by using the sweat.read pointer and then the client, then our DV entity list offset. Then when we have the entity list address, we can make our first entry into the entity list with the offset. 0x10 or 16 in decimal. Then we will loop through 64 controllers and get their pawn, but at first we will get the current controller, so we will use the sweat.read pointer with our list entry and then use our for loop variable i multiplied by the current step or the step which is 0x78. Then, once we have the current controller address, we can get the pawn handle with the sweat.readint using the current controller and the offset h player pawn. Now, because we have the pawn handle, we can make a second entry into the entity list, but with our pawn handle as the ID. So, we make a second entry with the sweat.read pointer. If you want more details on this, then I suggest you watch my separate entity list video. This will be more focused on the glow part. Once we have entered the correct list from the entity list, we can get the current pawn with our second list entry. Now, when we finally have the current pawn, we can set their detected enemy sensor time to a value that makes them glow. So we will set it to the value of 86,400. Then we will add a console bright line so that we can see how many entities we read through by pasting the current iteration and the current pawn's address. We will also let the CPU rest a bit so we sleep for 50 milliseconds or whatever value you want and then clear the console. So before we run any application, that manipulates the game's memory, we will go into Steam under the game Counter-Strike 2, we will right click on the properties, we will add the launch option dash insecure. This is because without this you can risk getting banned. Dash insecure will disable VAC and we can play on our own without harming anyone else's experience. So we can't join the normal matchmaking, but we can sit in a practice game all to ourselves and test our applications. So incredibly important, we can get banned otherwise. So now that we're done with the code, let's try it in game. So I'm here on the map office and we have some enemy bots here. So let's take our program and uh, run it. If your offsets and code are correct, then you should get a list of the entities from our console line here. And in game, they should now glow in red through the walls. Pretty cool. So 
so you can see that the glow counts down, but exactly when it turns non uh, or doesn't show anymore, it quickly goes back to being in glow. So it's not perfect, but it's a glow nonetheless. Let me know what suggestions you guys have after this. Maybe we should have custom colors. I don't know what we can add or if there's a new feature you want. But let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.